Hey, what's happening guys? We are going to move along with our designing the boost converter series. And today we're going to look at some of the components we talked about in the first part. And we're going to put together a small test bed on the breadboard and do a proof of concept to make sure it works. I do not expect nor do I intend to get to the 100 volts today. If we double, maybe triple our voltage from what I'm going to be doing today, that'll be just fine. Simply proving that everything works, going over the topology, how we're going to lay everything out. Before we get to that, somebody commented uh, yesterday about me misspeaking and saying, you know, I need to check my script before I do this. Um, look around, pal. You see a script anywhere? There's no script. There's me sitting here behind the camera, talking to you, sitting there on the other side of your computer. There's no script, so forgive me if I misspeak. All right, onward with the program. So in our first part, we talked about how we need to build a boost converter, how it works. We're basically using a MOSFET as a switch to, to turn on and off this inductor. We're not really turning it on and off, but we're, what we're doing is we are changing the direction of flow and it's going to create a charge. Charge is going to add up and that's how we're going to boost our voltage. And we use the Adafruit calculator and it said we needed an inductor of at least 0.56 micro Henry's. Now, I got this nice little inductor kit here and we definitely have, you know, the sizes we need, but these are tiny inductors. I don't want to use them. I want to use something meteor. So I wound my own inductor using magnet wire and a toroid. And if we put this into the testerama here, assuming I plugged it into the correct holes, I think we got 0.1 millihenries. Oh, of course, I didn't plug it in the right holes. I never get this right. Okay, let's see here. That's two. That's three. Let's try it this way. So anyway, 0.1 millihenries should be uh, more than enough. Yeah, there you go. About 0.01 millihenries. So, we're going to hook this up. We have our VCC is going to come in through the red rail here. Let me adjust the camera. There we go. So that guy's going to come in through there. Like that. So it'll be taking the power. And this will be basically our only connection to VCC is through the inductor. Then... I'm just going to put in a jumper here to keep things spaced out so it's easier for you guys to see. Then we have our diode. This is just a regular shot key diode. Like that. Now we have our MOSFET, which is our switch. This is the uh, FC2907. This is a HexFET and it is gate drain source. So we want to line the uh, the drain up here with this junction and I'm going to put it down here so that we can split things apart a little bit better. Like that. Then we'll just put in a little jumper wire. The important thing is that the, we'll call it the cathode side, there is no anode or cathode, the, an inductor is not polarized, but we'll call it the cathode side of the inductor meets the anode side of the diode and the drain of the MOSFET. So once those are all together there, we're good. Then I'm going to want another spacer. These are just spacers. 
okay? And then we have our capacitor, which is our energy storage device. In this case, this is 33 microfarad at 450 volts. It is polarized, so we want to make sure that this is heading towards ground. Get that in there. And we need to make sure it is connected to ground. And then from our other jumper here, we're going to have our load, which in this case is a 470 ohm resistor. Just like that. Then we'll have our uh, power coming in, our plus 9 volts, and our ground. Now, on the gate of the MOSFET, I'm going to use a 10K resistor to pull it to ground when the switching is off. Remember, a MOSFET is not like a transistor. The gate will tend to stay on until you turn it off. So what this will do is simply turn it off in between. And then we have the source of the MOSFET also is going to ground. So there is a good look at our topology of the boost converter. So you're going, wait a minute, you're, you're missing what's controlling the MOSFET, the MOSFET driver, right. And we're going to use the uh, UC3842AN, but not today. Today for our proof of concept, hold your horses here, I'm going to take you out of the stand, might get a little bumpy, but you can handle it, I'm sure. We're just going to be using this PWM driver. And it is maxed out at 150 kilohertz, and I've got it set for 85%. And because we're using that, that's why we're not going to get our full voltage. And that's fine. I'm, I'm not really looking for the full voltage today. Today, all I want to know is that it's working, that this configuration is a working configuration. So we'll hook up our power, which is 9 volts. And then we have these wires from our PWM. One goes to ground, and one goes to our gate. We'll put the meter on. Or have my wires here. Man, you still can't see that. Yeah. Uh, bump you up some more here. Hold on. There, that's better. All right, so I turn on the PWM driver and turn on our voltage. Now, if we look here, we'll test our voltage coming in. 8.89 and we'll test our voltage coming out 18.82 so we'll call it 19 oh you, can, well, you can't see that my hands in the way we're getting a good 19 volts now if I adjust the duty cycle there's 98% duty cycle well, it doesn't like that at all does it there we go at 95% duty cycle, we're getting around 20-some volts, but it is unstable, which I knew that would be, and that's fine. But the proof of concept works. We now know that this layout works, and that's what I wanted to get to today. So after our testing, we have no smoke. Nothing's hot to the touch. MOSFET is room temperature. Everything seems good. So that all that means is that my drawing is good. This layout works good. Now in the next part, 
we can work on setting up the PWM controller into this circuit. I'm gonna have to move this to a larger <laughs> breadboard, obviously, but that's not a problem. So, so far, so good. I want to thank you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to everybody who's made Learn Electronics a success. We're over 101,000 subscribers. And I'm still waiting for YouTube to send me the link so that I can get my silver play button. When I do, I'm going to share it with you all because it belongs to you as much as it does me. We're a community here. We're in this together. All right. That's it. I'm out. Peace.